Hi friends, last week was huge for all the iOS developers, WWDC with all the new releases from Apple. It's quite busy time because most of us still working full time jobs while Apple continue to releasing new session videos. It's quite hard to follow all of that. But I already have my top 3 from all of the released stuff, what in my opinion every iOS developer should take a look. And I would like to share how I am planning to deal with information overload and how I am planning to catch on all the new stuff released by Apple. First of all, congrats all of uh, fellow iOS devs now we are Mac developers as well. Science Apple announced that we'll release their Apple Silicon. And secondly, if you even didn't watch any dub dub session video yet and barely know what new is released in uh, dub dub DC in this year, don't panic. That's absolutely okay. That's fine if you didn't install it any betas and so on. All that released stuff is just a new release technology which is still in beta. It is not in production and will be not in production anytime soon. Yes, of course, on the fall iOS 14 will be released, but update cycles are not so fast anymore. I am still supporting iOS 11 for one app, iOS 10 for another app, so that's far away for iOS 14 will be as required in uh, production applications. Okay, let's jump to my favorite. Number 3 and the last one in my top 3 list is Xcode. Xcode 12 is really great improvement if we are comparing with Xcode 11. And I highly recommend to you to take a look and consider maybe you can start to use Xcode 12 already. So why uh, why, it is, uh, why I like it so much and what is new. There are plenty of new things, but I would like to highlight two of them. Swift Autocomplete. <laughs> that if you are using Swift for a while, you know how that happens. Sometimes uh, Autocomplete is uh, slow and sometimes that just doesn't work at all. Xcode 12 is much better from this perspective and my most favorite one is in-app purchase uh, testing in Xcode 12. If you are using in-app purchases in your applications and most of applications currently do that, that is my uh, way how to monetize our apps. So I highly recommend to take a look on session about testing in Xcode for in-app purchases and start to use it right now. I personally also doing that. I am using that for one of production products and I am testing in a purchases and there is plenty of new features. You can, you don't need anymore to use sandbox user that was huge pain for a while and that become better already. There are changes for sandbox users as well, but you don't need that to test uh, purchases in Xcode. You can just add your purchases and you can test all the purchase flow and you can emulate Apple's App Store fails and you can emulate errors, you can refund purchases and handle that refounding on device and there is plenty new and interesting things and I highly recommend you to take a look on that and also you can even write automated tests for in the purchases. Second one is widgets. New thing in iOS 14. That's a very nice and powerful thing, interesting thing. You can open different widgets and uh, you can add different widgets on the screen. I think that widgets will become popular very very fast because that is great opportunity to <laughs> occupy quite a big chunk of uh, screen on the user's device and that is quite common that users are downloading applications and just forgot to use them. This widget can be a little bit more helpful to be on front of the eyes of the user as soon as the phone is opened and locked and so on and I am planning to implement that in my apps as well and I expecting to see that as a requested feature in freelance projects as well. Take at least brief look on uh, what widgets are and think how you could use those for your applications. So, and what is my number one? Not a surprise, but that's Swift UI. Of course, the same like most of iOS developers, I'm using UI kit in my day-to-day -day job, but I'm looking forward to use Swift UI quite soon because of widgets. Widgets are working with Swift UI only, so probably I will start already implement some screens for widgets in 
production apps which still supports iOS 10 or 11 and so on and for sure I'm looking forward to use SwiftUI in my own applications. There are plenty new things in SwiftUI, stacks and grids for example to build user interfaces that was kind of missing before, now it is here, but let's talk how to handle all those news, how to learn that uh, what resources we could use for that. Just in case I would like to mention that Platform State of Union Keynote is must see. There are most of the news covered in very compressed way. It is about, I don't remember, two hours presentation, about two hours keynote and most of the new things are covered. Of course sessions are going more in details but you can get high perspective overview of all of news related to development. As soon as you are ready to dive deeper in details, pick something that you see starting to use soon. Of course, that is interesting to learn new things, but no reason to just learn for learning something that you clearly know that you will not use for few years. My case, for example, Xcode 12 within a purchases I'm using that already and I'm learning new things, so new development tools, new testing ways and so on. That is practical thing that I can use already and widgets and Swift UI to another things from my top three list. I already following a tutorial from WWDC and building that widget application and looking forward how to implement that widgets in my application and I'm looking on related sessions to see what else videos I would like to watch to see how better prepare migration to Swift UI for screens where that will be needed, how to prepare my data and so on. Basically I have some plan uh, what I am planning to watch and learn. For sure developers up from Apple with all the sessions and so on and uh, transcriptions on iPad or on Mac is great place to start. We can star sessions that we are planning to watch but <laughs> without plan to how to learn that when to learn that there is big chance that those sessions will stay favorited but not watched until the next WWDC so better prepare some roadmap for your uh, app with features that you would like to implement or some learning roadmap what you would like to learn and to start to use in your own applications or in freelance projects. I would like to list few resources what I am already using and planning to continue to use to catch up on all the new stuff and I will uh, put all the links below in description just below like button <laughs> don't worry to write those down and uh, yeah just click the links later Hacking with Swift resource is here for sure. If you are in Swift UI, there is very great summary with an examples from Paul Hudson. What's new in Swift UI for iOS 14? Highly recommend that. That's great resource to take a look on. If you are not into Swift UI, there is great summary of what is new in Swift 5.3. That's quite good and as always with great examples and I can't uh, recommend this resource more for all the beginners just to learn Swift development and iOS development. While we are still on hacking with Swift, check out WWDC recommended talks and wrap up post. That is good one as well. There is plenty to read and watch on this resource so hacking with Swift is without doubt very good resource for learning iOS development and I can't recommend it more it's great one I have quite a few books from this resource as well really like it okay next in my list is WWDC 2020 viewing guide that's very fast read and I suggest to take a look into this that's you will spend I don't know 15 minutes 20 minutes and you already will get brief overview about what's happened in WWDC and there are all of the links you can click and watch some sessions if you will have time and are interested to take a look on glance on those. Next one is WWDC notes that is really what the domain says <laughs> WWDC notes that is community driven resource there are just other developers writing down notes, making screenshots while watching WWDC sessions. I found this very useful because you can just jump in and 
just a brief overview about highlights uh, in notes from every session and maybe you will see that yeah this is really what I was looking for or that's not what I am interested in so a really nice resource to jump in and take a brief look on sessions and last one in my list but not least is github repository uh, that is one more extra long list with WWDC session notes. This resource still is in status work in progress. There are plenty of sessions with to do to write notes and uh, if you are in open source and contribution you can contribute in open source in this way. Write notes from WWDC sessions and um, or read what is already wrote here. If you have your own favorite resources to catch up on WDC news, let us know in the comment section below. And yeah, thank you for watching. And uh, if you like this video, there is like button and uh, subscriptions uh, button is next to it as well. I really appreciate uh, everyone who follows this YouTube channel. And we have quite nice community here. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Thank you guys and thank you for watching. See you on next one.